Hello, hello folks, welcome back. We've returned for the decider between the sides of TNC Predator and Detonator in this lower bracket decider match for who goes into the finals for an opportunity to go to ESL 1 Katowice 2019. Everything to play for, low tack, patiently, but probably getting impatient at this stage. They just want to get their day over with. Sitting, <laughs> watching, waiting, going, is it TNC, is it Detonator, who's Dota buffs am I looking at? Well, we're going to find out soon enough because, Kips, this is where it comes down to. Is history going to repeat itself? Very short history, just yesterday. Yeah. Or can TNC recover? Because that was your big concern, right? It's like TNC, it felt like they didn't get over the second game yesterday. Yes. I have said that before that because of Cuckoo missing, you miss not just his plays, but you also miss his presence as one of the, like, there's a dual backbone behind it team, which is the two experienced players, Tims and Cuckoo. And while Rior might be able to captive, like to replace that emotional impact in-game, those flashy plays, those out-of-the-box maneuvers, you know, the unguided missile kind of thing, yeah. you don't have the guy behind that who is, in spite of his outside reputation, a pretty experienced and calming presence. Because you know if he's there, he's been through this stuff before. And now he's not. And Tim's has to do it all on his own. And I, I I think this is where we find out if he and Ninja Boogie can actually calm things down and reset them enough. I mean, that's the big thing. People all, quite often they talk about team chemistry and they think from the perspective of bringing in a new guy if he's going to mesh well with the rest. Most people forget about what you lose when you replace someone. It's not just about the new person feeling like the right fit. It's about adapting to that new person as much, you know, it, it, it's yeah. both ways. It's not just them adapting to you. You have to adapt to them. You're almost never getting a straight upgrade. Like, oh, this guy can do everything the previous guy can do, but also. It's never like that. And especially not when it's a stand-in during a time where all the other people are just locked down. you got to get someone who has certain shortcomings. And Rior's play has impressed me so far, but I can't help but feel like TNC is sorely missing an extra experienced presence on the field right now. They're definitely still adapting, but what they're not doing is wasting any time with the draft. That's right. We are already underway, well, we? and we are in the second phase. They rushed through that first one. They knew what they wanted. TNC, of course, going to the Terror Blade. The Brewmaster, just a given. Now, Denez, they snatched up the Rubicon and the Beastmaster combo again. And Pugna banned by TNC, rightfully so. No surprise there. The nuke damage was a little bit overwhelming, but these two in themselves still do a lot. And now they've added a centaur to the mix. And this is still a very... Any of these heroes from Detonator can still play on pretty much any position. Heroic could be mid or support. Support could be 4 or 5. The Beastmaster, 3, 4 or 5, as TNC themselves demonstrated before. Centaur, 3 or 4. So you probably have... Three, four, five here on the board, but which one goes where? <laughs> That's a puzzle that I am not willing to work out. Someone else can do that. This, this is why drafting is fun. It, it, well, this is kind of how things have changed. Like you compare it to the early days of Dota, people clearly knew what yep. X, Y was doing. Whereas, you know, that's always been the beauty of Dota. Is it's such a deep game, especially uh, more so because of items than anything else. It just allows the flexibility of what you do with a hero and what a game needs. Yeah, I've always told my teams that they should not look at draft losses as, like, losses. They should look at them as a reason to itemize better. That's a fair way of looking at You know, the game is not won or lost in the draft. That's one of the beautiful things. You know, I'm not naming other MOBAs, but some of them <laughs> tend to be very draft dominant. And that's where you can see the win or the loss, but... It's very hard to call it on a draft alone. And Wyvern is the third pick for Predators. Now, this seems targeted... Uh, what I assume is I'm anticipating Dene is going for an early kind of stack death ball push lineup. Yes, and it is also one of the most powerful counter-initiating tools in the game when this lineup with a Beastmaster, with a Center, and even kind of the Rubik is really going to come at you. One or all of these heroes are going to pick up a Blink Dagger and run into your team and you want to make sure that not just is that first initiation nullified but also Winter's Curse lasts long enough to make sure that the second follow-up that comes after it could just blink straight into that curse and of course these are experienced players they're so probably not going to do that but it means that for those seconds you actually get to reset instead of get hit by the one-two punch 
And it's also the case of what it gives TNC is what they didn't have so far, which is a BKB piercing Assassin. ultimate, which will be even more useful with the arrival of Phantom Assassin, especially with the change of this hero, of course, because Phantom Strike, they changed it. It's not just a target anymore. It's a duration. So yes. you Phantom Strike into someone when his curse comes out, you're probably killing your own heroes. I uh, I could really see this Rubik or this Beastmaster just get critted into the floor. But then again, this Winter Wyvern herself can do that. It's really like, the Winter Wyvern pick also is much better now that this Pugna is off the board. Because one of the problems with Winter Wyvern is that if you have this Golden Brace going on to save people, the enemy can just blast through it with magical nukes. Especially those lovely ground targeted AoEs of Pugnas. And Phantom Assassin in that regard also does nothing against the Embrace. So you can totally save people from the Phantom Assassin. Yeah, I think Dene's logic so far is they have enough magical damage and that adds more pure damage to TNC's mix as they pick up the Outworld Devourer. They're still a bit light on the direct disables of this track, but I am very pleased with the different damage sources and different things they have. They have single target damage, they have building damage, they have AoE. Uh, like, they cover all angles. And you've heard me say it before, I love it when people do that for their first four picks, so that the fifth, there is no pressure. You can just pick anything. Even techies. Don't do that. But, OD... Don't, don't do that. I wouldn't do it with this draft. No, 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 no. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't do it with this like, draft. No. If there's a beast master on the other side, I, like it used to be wild axes dealt with you pretty well, but now the hawks, good luck. Yeah. But, so the thing to look at here as well is people kind of, it felt like people wrote off Outward Devourer as a hero very fast and they're learning very quickly now. Actually, this guy has uses. He has placed in teams. Uh, one big focus for a lot of people has been, they think, as the meta moves more towards stacking, which is like to do with the buffs to it, Mm -hmm. you will see OD appear a lot more because, well, he can actually do splash damage with his orbs, so he gets through big stacks. And I think the other convenient factor is ancient camps are located right next to shrines, so you can sustain max mana and dish out a crap ton of damage. Hmm, I hadn't looked at it that way yet. But, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see if TNC is actually going to use that. I do know that, well, that would mean that the Terror Blade would have to be on the lanes a lot more, though. And in this case, I expect this to be Armel going full combat mode. I've seen him ga t take over games on that myself before. You have to make sure you don't run to a speed bump, though. That's the thing about OD. Like, they've changed certain heroes, like Slark, for example, used to be this full snowball, but now he gets at least a permanent gain of, of agility for kills. <laughs> Whereas, and that is what I want to see, is this, is mm. you need that constant aggression. Low cooldowns, yes. just rapid movements. Smash, smash, smash. And this is such a Dim's hero. He's looking at Brawl. And actually, the Tusk Brewmaster combo is a lethal one. Super potent. If you. Like, in the lane alone, the amount of damage for the. Like, these people are going to be punching you. You kill people at level two. Like, yeah. that, that's the point. Tag team and snowball, and then you just go in with the drunken brawler. Keep in mind, folks, that tag team's damage gets added on to crits. So. If you're critting with the Drunken Brawler, even 25 extra damage adds up pretty quick. I think this Phantom Assassin has a lane to dodge. You could try and match up the Centaur instead, because I like to put the Phantom Assassin with the Rubik for protection. Uh, I would... How does she match up against the OD in the mid? That's the thing. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like The PA-OD matchup is a weird one. The OD... You're still going to suffer from the mischance, right? So you can yes. kind of sustain decently. Although I'm just worried because if you're like half HP, the moment that he gets sick, Science Eclipse gets dropped and you just die. Yes. But she is going mid, I'm pretty sure. It's looking yes. like it. the Batrider pick comes out as well. I mean, you could run Batrider mid. It's been a while since we've seen that. Wait, wait, wait. Is that a Ben Hur Rubik? No, that's, yeah. That's actually a mid Rubik. All right. So okay. it is going to be a mid Because I was looking at this right now. I was like, who's going to be in your safe lane? Like, what's happening right now? Because you've got Sentai, you've got Batrider, you've got Beastmaster. <laughs> They can't all be course. So in the end, it's going to be the five beast masters that we've seen ran by TNC themselves before, by the way. And that does mean that we are going to get a POS 4 Centaur, POS 3 Batrider, and this is going to be the PA accepting fate against the Brewmaster Tusk lane. Yep, and she's very reluctant to uh, 
You can see he's like he's still not picked his hair. He's like, Wait, guys, guys are still not. Are we sure about this? Because this yeah. doesn't. Mm, I don't like this. I really would like to see him actually go for the Deso build this time, and not you have the Battle to. Fury. You absolutely have to. You need to be rapid and engaging. Like the Terror Blade, we've seen how you beat the Terror Blade. Usually, like the way it succeeds is you shut him down a little bit at the beginning, and then you maximize your gold intake by taking towers and you starve yes. him up you don't just go hunting him all the time you take control of his map otherwise he'll just still bounce back it doesn't matter it's just inevitable the terror blade is still i'd say easily king of the late game and what i mean by that is yes some like void might be stronger right yeah but it's harder to justify a void early on whereas a terror blade can have the crappest lane in the world he will always 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 farm his way back through the jungle and i'm in like this last pick bad rider doesn't quite do it for me. Did you gotta grab the OD? Otherwise, he's just going to imprison whoever's getting dragged back. That's the thing as well. Like, I'm looking. I gotta say, Denez, they have a lot of BKB piercing ultimates to work with. They've got the Beastmaster, they've got the Bat Rider, and also I'm just thinking Arcane Supremacy and how that's going to interact with those type of things could be pretty impressive. Yes. We'll. I think this one's a a coin toss. It all comes down to execution. If TNC has their things together again, I do think they play better on a map. I do think it's very important that Gabby is on a much um, less active hero again. So he doesn't... He is not the space maker. He is the one that space will get made for, which is the more natural division of roles between him and Amel. What TNC definitely do have is a clearer focus on towers. The Beastmaster is giving a decent chunk to detonators, but when you look at their cores, like the Phantom Assassin, until you just stack loads of damage, Death Slayer, whatever else, you don't really do too much to towers. Whereas Terror Blade, you leave them alone for a minute, a tower is going to fall. The rinse repeat of this hero is how he just sneaks back up on you when you think he's dead and gone. Yes, you're going to be occupied on the other side of the map by this OD, this. Tusk, Brewmaster, Nightmare, and it is Rior on the Brewmaster again. I liked how he played the last game, just not that Midas. Kind of hoping to see him ramp up faster this time. He's gone for the double Stout Star as well. And he's got Quelling and Phase Boots queued up. We d yeah, we usually don't see double Stout to begin with. It's usually, if you're going to pick it up, it's something you pick up. Uh, a few minutes in, maybe. I think Axe is the one exception, but even then, like I've heard arguments between Wayne. And he is wisely waddling his way out there. And meanwhile, there's no no contest on bot. You don't mess with that. It's a toss, right? You you try and engage, you get cut off by nice shards, and you're outnumbered. It's always a risk. Yes, and his Winter Wyvern deals tons of damage in early fights as well. That is so true. It, it would force her to go Arctic Burn when you would normally rather go Splinter Blast. So, the in most interesting part for me here is definitely the mid matchup. Yes, because the Fade Bolt reduces your damage. Now, with the new way OD works, is more this kind of power spike of damage you put out because of the new Equilibrium. So, you're not constantly just relying on RNG and hoping to just sustain mana. But Astral is still decent, as you can see. The catch is always going to be, like, you saw it from Rubik, you kept harassing him because it's such a short range. You have to get so close that you do just tank a few hits. Yes, and you gotta you can't just throw it out willy nilly either. Like this fade bolt, you can use it whenever you want. But the astral, what you want to do is use it at a time where you can maximize the payoff in terms of experience missed for your opponent. He's actually just focusing like, more on denies right now. Fulfilled. There are a lot of denies for Armel already though. He's got four on the board. Only one last hit himself though. Adds up similarly. Rior is suffering a little bit. Despite this double stout, you're actually already seeing the power of the Beastmaster. As the tusk is still bot. Once again, this semi try start. But which one of the bat rider and centaur did you want to kill? Yeah, this is the the infinite question right now. It's like bat rider, you jump on him, he'll just slow you all down before you can actually close the gap. Like yes, you can kill he'll anyone. Fly out of the shards afterwards. Yeah, like by the time you're two and can kill, he has two and has a point in five life. Meanwhile, you spend all this time here. Rio is getting XP, but he's definitely suffering for it. He's burnt through most of his tangos and he's low on HP. At least they are really securing Gabby this time. And it's not just about... Um, you know, it's not just about securing the hero, but it's also about securing him as, like, the person. He fucked up last game, and you're here right now to tell him, hey, it's okay. 
We are, we trust in you. We are securing your land. We are securing your farm. You're going to carry this game, buddy. It's more important than you think. We do see that. Like, the teams have started to learn the importance of it. Just identifying if someone has a bad time, you try and enable them the next game because they're going to be the ones that are, are feeling demoralized and roughed up. And RR get roughed up here. Goes down. Ninja Boogie gets the first blood with Splinter Blast. They'll get a follow-up kill on the Sam H as well. That early DD rune, I, I believe uh, a famous player has uh, asked for two-minute runes to be removed. Yeah, this we've already seen the effect. <laughs> like, hey, come on, we see the effect. Second game, Ninja Boogie picks up a haste, snipes the core at the tier three. Yep. This game, Tim's picks up a DD, sets up two kills in the bot lane after what was looking like an abysmal start because he wasn't doing anything there. Yes. Gabby should be feeling much better right now. I think this is the moment where you actually go top, but he's going to wait a little bit because Rio is walking back. He ran out of regen. He's got his little stick now, though. I say in a very condescending way, it's a little stick. It'll be a pretty big stick in this lane, of course, being up against the Phantom Assassin. And she's having free farm right now. That's the only thing. So I do hope that TNC is going to make moves over there eventually. Because you're never going to be trading well enough. Like I, I can't see this being enough of a massacre. Tim's? Maybe in an RR. They're going to turn around Ninja Boogie. There's four stacks on him. What is he doing here? It's going to go down. Tim's been slowed as well, and he did level on the ice shards. Go go for the TP. Well, we'll make it. But it's back to tower. He already loses half his HP pool. Yeah, and I'd like to see Ninja Boogie. But Ninja Boogie top, honestly, I'd rather want Tim stop because we talked before about the ridiculous interaction between tag team and the drunken roller. So you'd want him to be the one to move. Uh, it's hard though because he took that point in ice shard. Like if you took snowball, I agree. But because you're like in this scenario. The only real way you're going to get kills now is with free heroes until you get free. Like, it, it sounds ridiculous because of the heroes we talked about it being up against. But with the Arctic Burn and with the tag team, it is feasible. Well, let's find out what they want to do. As you highlighted earlier as well, just Gabby, just making this the easiest start possible. It does mean that Rio gets punished pretty damn hard. But well, he's been messing with Fly Solo in the pool camp. I think he's feeling okay about the amount of uh, EXP he's getting at least. But yeah, obviously Fly Solo and Raging Potato are the big winners here. He's got a bunch of followers now. Look at that. Nice big creep wave coming through for him. Double range as well. And that's the important thing is like... You Shout know. out to all my fans <laughs> following me. Like Twitter followers. And Tusk. Uh, that is unfortunate. Gabby. Gabby has CP's to back to tower, but the damage is so large. Oof. We'll be fine. We'll tango up. And yeah, he had a, a reasonably one. full one as well. But that now he's goodness, just though. in danger again. He, the Sam it's H actually going to go gonna down. Gabby? Sam H. Seven stacks. Sam the man. Just keeps on running. Sees the opportunity. And he TP'd as well. I told you guys before, this man's a cold-blooded killer. I, I meant it. He just he sees that. He does a calculation. And he's like, hmm, okay. I'm going to grab this one, if you don't mind. He's definitely slaying him. As a result, you've got a TB walking back to lane after a great start as well. He's now starting to fall behind. And while we say TB recovers, I'm worried when a Phantom Assassin is having this great of a start. Yes, and Sam H is actually above Armel and Gabby both as well, just off of those kills. He's having a fantastic time. He's loving life right now. It's simple for him, because he only really just wants to get the levels... More important than anything else, just get his hands on that level six, makes lasso kills happen. Yeah, and um, Fly Solo could just check in with mid lane, see if everything's good because he's not needed topside anymore. And this bat rider is messing with everything Tips. and everyone right now. Being chased on to use the ice shards, and this is where he once again wish he had that snowball, but still not level three. But we ran down, killed off. He just tries to waste their time. It's cost them dearly dominating streak for Sam H. And the mid lane is looking rough as well. You can already see uh, lead building for TNC. TNC's favorite in this scenario. So this, this is where things are going well. They yeah. needed this lane to work more than anything else. Because the other two sure aren't. So yes, no pressure, Armel. But this game's going to be on you for a while. And he has he has the three nulls ready. This man knows his ass. <laughs> three nulls versus three nulls. Should be pointed out the natural defense he just has against Phantom Assassin. Which is Sanity's Eclipse. Yes. So it's like a PA can't just die fully on him. If you get to about half HP, Science Clips instantly kills you, even if he has no installment. It's a scary time for Phantom Assassin Pickers. 
See, what you really need is a Luna combo. Luna OD, <laughs> you get the stat bonus, and you just oh, instantly please. kill a PA from full HP. Rior has actually reasserted some form of dominance in this top lane, and the PA TP's out. She's shown as well, so this is Detonator saying, all right, we're going to take your bot tower now, if you don't mind. And Gabby, yeah, Gabby's wisely backing off from this camp. Well, he identifies. The only reason they're making that move is because they've got six on Batrider and he reads it right. Sam H was looking for the last two opportunity. He has got the drums as well. If they can make a wraparound happen onto Armel here, who oh, is that, low on that HP. That would be huge. He's getting up to the high ground now, though. He so needs the shrine. That's the, he knows what's up. Very close. And Gabby made it towards top for the trade. Meanwhile, no Winter Wyvern, who is the most excellent hero at defending tower solo, usually. Uh, made her way to top, but the creep wave got taken away by Fly Solo, and she is very low level right now. So yeah, she's going to have to start defending the tier two instead. That is a very early tier one. And Tim's, well, he got free now. Nice ice shards down to the low ground. He does have the snowball to work with, but the ice shards stolen and used against him by Ben here. Lasso as well. Snowball buys him a few seconds. Those pressure few seconds won't matter. As he should still go down here. Rior comes walking in. He has six. He has got the split. Stomp comes out from RR with TP away. Split. It's going to be in time. Oof. Long TP. And RR. Well, that TP felt like a lifetime. Astro will be there. Armel says, thank you for the kill, Mr. Brewmaster. Rior still takes it. <laughs> he with just the takes the tap. Oh, Cyclone. It's on the Sam H. He's going to try and fly over the trees. Can they move fast enough? No, they can't. They'd already used the Science Eclipse. So no opportunity here. Yeah, that was a bit of a sad sanities. I think Armel had to recalibrate a little bit there. Like, oh yeah, I gotta hit people more first. It should maybe like, like be custom lines. If it's really good, there's just this godly music playing, and if it's bad, it's like wow, wow, wow. Just something that sounds really pitiful. Like my attempt at that line. A bit like um, Earthshaker when he does Echo Slam. Oops. I, I would actually pay for a line that instead of his Echo Slam, it's just him going oops. Oops. I, yeah, the, if there's ever an Earthshaker Arcana, that needs to be in there. Whoops. The Earthshaker players that do that, it's your own damn fault. It was your own damn fault. I can, I can go pretty low, actually. You gotta go pretty low. Okay. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is where it just turns into this. Like, I can do this hero. I can do this hero. Slyly. Slyly. She's creeping up on Rior right now, and he does not have his ultimate. He's gonna go down. They oh. did act Oh, it's Cold Embrace. Buys you a few seconds, but the story doesn't end well. And all the while, they were trying to make a move in the top lane, actually, as they did almost get their hands on Tim's. Ninja Boogie? I would have liked for Ninja Boogie to stick around there. He can still... He could have been in the trees now still and blasting away, but now they're gonna see... Oh, he cleverly cuts the trees, all right. Because... I don't think we've seen the value not, of this wipe. You're not so getting far. enough out of Splinter Blast if you're not defending these towers with it. That's the so thing. There we go. Like, he, he has to be spamming this a lot more. He needs to be sapping up that XP in the, the deadlines here. Because so far, Detonators have just been allowed to do what they want without yes. much punishment. And TNC right now has both of their cores crammed in the same little division of their jungle again. And it's they might be punished. Sam H with the drums moving through. Looking for a target here. They think about Armel. They need to be careful of the Astral. And they'll just back away. They just want to make sure they stop this farm. And it's double efficiency because they have both cores there. Yes. And also they were pushing them away from the side of this mid tower, which is now going down. So it's also an area control move. You move in dominantly. You say this is ours now. And Tim's? Tim's is getting low here. It's going to be a little bit too close for comfort. The Astral buys him a few seconds. But he is very fragile. The Fate Ball. No, gets the snowball. It's not going to end well, though. Aye, aye, aye. All the while on the top, RR has just been poking and prodding at this tower. And this mobility. Damn it. They are just rapid. They are not letting up off the gas here. Yeah, so they barely have and they're not. They come back in again. To work with and oh, hell. Ben here moves so fast as well. He's going to get a lift, brings him back. Four. Fly Solo does have the raw to work with. Thinks twice though. Astral comes out. He says abort. Rio's coming across right now and he has a split. Lap's going to be there and Fly Solo will go down. He'll oh, save the raw. What about it for too long. They were a little bit slow to reach. Like you could see it was taking too long. There. It was taking too long though. Like you could see the backstab incoming. Yes. So I guess it was the right move, but at the same time, 
hesitant movements like that are not a good indication for what's to come. So that line of Armels right there, that you can see what's... Yeah, yeah, it's it's a bad sign. You gotta just do it or not do it. There, There is no try. Raging Potato, good try and escape. Stampede comes out, but there's the war response to the ice shards. Astral in the air. It's right up here, folks. Here he comes. See you later, Phantom Assassin. And Sam H, he's poking and prodding here. Split's going to be committed. And because he used the Firefly, there's no escape of these trees because they're all cut. Cyclone's coming out. He even used the drums. Spend a little bit of time in the air contemplating on what you did wrong. And it's quite the loss of tempo. This is a team that was 4k ahead. Their leads are now halved. Raging Potato was almost at his Battle Fury there before he went down. And now Gabby's coming up. He's been farming the opponent's jungle with his illusions. He's moving on his mid lane. They got so much space for him just now. And I want to say that this is probably due to either bad or predictable ward coverage in the Radiant Jungle. If you want to play there, if you want to stay there, you need to have your vision in order. And it might be that they got dewarded. Might be that they didn't have the wards there in the first place, but they got caught out with two. Yeah, you look at TNC's vision, they already prepped for these sort of scenarios, especially in that high area of the jungle where they first kind of got turned I, on. I, I, I would like to... And then, yes, we th this ward is uh, an interesting strategic ward. It's for the, the Tinker TP. Mm. Uh, the problem is there's no Tinker in this game, but better safe than sorry. Yeah, this is, you never know when that guy turns up. He does kind of creep up on you. Much like this PA. Who almost had that battle fury? Just 100 gold off. Raging potato go, and the bot lane. Name him more. <laughs> he da he does it well. I'll give him credit for that. And fly solo really nicely got him a stack to work with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This this folks this shouldn't work. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, punishment deserved right there. Slow him down. That, that's uh that's tax for easy clearing. He has to be stomped twice, and held in place. But now you can actually see TNC, they have got out of the base. They're going to look to pressure more Taz. We did talk about this advantage that you do have with the Terror Blade, as compared to the side detonator where they are more pick-off focused. Well, they have only a small window left for these kinds of things. I see detonator smoking right now. I think that's a little bit early. They have a Blink Dagger on RR coming in in about 100 gold. I'm not sure why they wouldn't wait for that. Because that will... There's a blink on Sam Hatred now. Yeah, so they'll just bring him in anyway. They can get the kill on the Tims. Lift. They've got tag team as well. They can stack up the damage. Winner's Curse comes out. There's Centaur. Taking a lot of damage here. The snowball through. Held by Tims. They'll get the kill first. Tims still alive. Now turn around. Sam H going to go down. Raging Potato trying to move away. The Primal Roar. Armel throws him out. But the Cold Embrace used. Raging Potato. He has the high ground. Anakin. But I don't think he wants to go in here. He's thinking about it. Ben here. Fade Bolt through. Armel getting low. Sells the Science Clip. So the Split comes out. Looking to re engage. Phantom Strike to the high ground. Raging Potato will crit the creep wave and look to move away. Such an awkward fight. It's like you can... The second half is just both teams going, are we committing? Is yeah. anyone committing? Both of them really don't want to fight in that corridor. And that's nobody down on TNC. A missed Blink Dagger reveal and a huge... Well, nearly a huge setback, I should say. RR did get to buy his Blink Dagger before he died. <laughs> but that could have easily just been a delay on our secondary engagement as well. I think the thing to look at with that fight is uh, what we were saying earlier. It's like, I am not seeing the value of this Wyvern so far. Finally! Ninja Boogie! He shows us this Wyvern pick pays off as these new choke points are just a small preview of what these type of heroes can do. Yeah, no matter what happens in this game, he's always going to remain a threat. Last time is down, but they're still jumping Armel here. They are. Armel has to Astral defensively. RR. Got right, the haste. He used the stomp, though. Astral again. <laughs> but I'm never coming out. Come on, it's fine. And narrow. And wins cause. It's off cooldown again. Batrider taking a lot of damage actually here. Not enough to die. Venu hits hard now. Coming in with the crit. They're going to get killed on Wyvern. The stomp connects on the Gabby as well. Sunder being used. Rage of Potato is going to move away the blur. Trying to dodge out anything incoming. The buyback from Wyvern. Looking on the fly solo next. Tim surrounds him. He says, okay, time for vengeance. Die, fly solo. Primal Roar being used. Tim's getting low. Oh. Sand Eclipse. They get rid of the PA. They stand their ground. And now Armel getting low. He's going to pay the price for it. He will go down. The Stampede being used. Going to turn around. Last who's going to be out on the Tim's. Cold Embrace to buy a little bit of time. He has no target though. Sam H low. But no one close enough to make the connect and finish off the kill on the Batrider. I think that's still a win for TNC though. Sam H... 
getting out there is honestly like that's the only thing that makes it acceptable for detonator but losing the pa who i said it before gonna say it again go to Tezo first because you just mop up these fights you see how fragile these heroes on tnc are and with the battle fury you should be farming right now but we've seen raging potato man's gonna be in your face so this battle fury doesn't mesh with his style and it's why i feel that all the SEA teams that I've seen with PA so far haven't been that impressive because they are playing against their nature. So, I would normally agree. There is, a, there is one justification for why it's fine in this type of game, and it's actually been what Fly Solo has been doing so much, and it's stacking. Like, usually, the, uh, the argument is for Desolator because, right, Phantom Strike, the way it works now, you clear a camp the same speed as a Battle Fury, like Battle Fury wielder. But, admittedly, he's been doing double and triple stacks. I think that's the only reason they've got away with this. Because he has got very close to finish that death layer. And I agree, he does need to BKB desperately. Like, if he... For me, it's more about the fighting. I can see with... Especially with a more reserved player, right? Someone who takes those stacks with the Battle Fury and then doesn't go and commits these fights. I could see it being the superior choice easily. But he does go and fight. And then he's just lacking the damage. He's forced to. Like, you look at the lineup. They need that extra damage from him. They can lock down very well. Yeah, but who's going to make the kills? Well, like right now their source of damage is Rubik and his Arcane Supremacy. Now, I would like to see our melt. There we go. He does make the move. As I say, just steal this and force the Armel. And now the stomp comes out. It's going to be punished. So Armel going to get down with his curse. No! The cold embrace holds Armel. Plays the primal roll there as well. He says, you're definitely going down when I come out. Now the stomp trying to use it. Split comes out. Oh, I get low on HP, but the final another kill. Tusk down. Trying to move through. Rior in full retreat. He does not want his brew pandas here. The cyclone controls up the PA, but he doesn't know where he's leaving. There's a storm panda, and the only one left is the earth one. They'll move forward, look for the final kill, and do it. They'll yeah, find her. getting sacrificed. Raging Potato. You know what? But screw it. Didn't even need the stack. Got more gold out of uh, these stacked heroes as opposed to the stack creeps. Uh, they fight in that little further again, and this PA is going straight for Roche now. She's and got the Desolate now. She's got no reason not to. Three heroes in. And at the same time, getting ever close to that BKB after you get that and you go back for those stacks, you know, you can have BKB 22, 23 minute at this rate. Oh, I shot stolen. Ben here just making sure they can't pursue into the pit and interrupt this. There we Yay. Tiny bit. There it is. Thank you very much. Nagus picked up. Snowball through. They want to try and get rid of it straight away with the Warriors Punch. Going to get him low. Yes, they get rid of the Aegis. And they keep going though. Tim's the Ice Shard. Just trying to call off any reinforcements. Phantom Strike away. They gotta be careful. Gabby does a lot. The crit oh, coming out. The team's down to half HP already now. Lasso's gonna be there. Drags Armel away. See, no, no science eclipse on my PA. We'll keep him alive. And they'll be able to disengage. They did lose the Aegis. They don't lose anyone after that. And RR even steals the rune. Sneaky boy. Tim's. 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 That, that is a lot of stacks. The ice shot. Tim's. Not like this. He'll turn around slow for the snowball. Rush. The lift. Science Eclipse kills off no one initially. Looking for someone though. The fine fly cell on the side. Tim's ever oh, so deep on its low right. HP. It doesn't matter though. Ben here down. Gabby with the double kill. The winner's curse finds the Phantom Assassin as well. Phantom strike to the high ground. Raging Potato will get out. At the end of the day, in Detonator's eyes, as long as the PA lives, there is hope. TNC had enough of Detonator. It, they're so desperate for these kills under Tim's, and it's just not its not worthwhile. Well, not anymore, but Tim's having a bad game is usually TNC having a bad game, and you can really... <laughs> Important stampede to steal the runes of Rior. He's being turned around. No, oh, the shot! No. Tim's! The word, the word. He you traps see, him this, in. This is what happens when your Tusk has a bad game. This is the kind of hero that really needs... And it gets worse. It's a double kill for the oh. PA. She's invaded the jungle like, and now what do I do? You need that confidence. You need to be able to pull off those plays with a completely straight face. And right now he's feeling iffy. And you can see it. Times like this, from a non-creepy perspective, we need player cameras, even online qualifiers. <laughs> she wants to see the reaction of his face. Just there's gonna be a in face I palm. I can see, yes, yes, I can see his face in my mind. I'm like, no. And Rior's <laughs> face would be like, what What was that? What? <laughs> Rior does a good what face and Tim's does a good sad face, but it's, I, you know, for me it's always, for people outside, it's like drama and tension, you know, that's part of the entertainment. So for me it's like, no, it's not funny. <laughs> Stop doing that.
Rage of Potato probably just has a giant smirk on his face right now. Filthy Phantom Assassins and the blur farming and then just being mm -hmm. funneled. These kids. He's basically just down on one knee and he's like just trying to do a beer chug right. He's like, just funnel the food in. Give me the gold because he's now got the BKB. You do realize that you're talking about a player who has been criticized in the past for... <laughs> For exactly. chugging? Not, not for not for not taking his Dota career seriously enough. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's like chugging? <laughs> it's like, what am I missing here? Uh, oh, there is a point of light for TNC, though, because Gabby has actually been farming during this. He would much rather just be hitting creeps. He's actually going for the BKB next. The only problem is with the Primal Roar, with the Lasso, and the, with a PA, this BKB is not going to be the big turn point that it normally would for a Terra Blade. There's no. still so many threats. It's really hard. He has to send background. He has to really... Like, Rior is going to have to really sacrifice himself here to tank the damage, tank the engagements. At the very least, he should get lassoed. At the very least, yes. I'd expect that to be the case and then just immediately gets melted. I mean, they'll probably look to Primal Roar instead. It's a safer bet that way, because the Phantom Assassin, like, you haven't got anyone next to her for a Winner's Curse turnaround. I think the Lasso is the thing you try and snipe either the Wyvern or the Outward Devourer out with. And both teams are kind of off on their smoke timings here. TNC smoked the top, found nobody, and now Detonator thought that TNC would be in here, which is... Well, it was a very good guess, but they sensed something wrong. I think they should have left someone on the bot lane, probably, who could TP on the Shrine later. And TNC would have gone in for it. Well, Rage of Potato's going in anyway. He's got the BKB. He's going to poke a prog. He's not going to pursue, though. Of course, the advantage that they do have is they... I believe they stole the Hawk. Oh, sorry, no, they got the Hawk. Yeah, I was, I was like, wait, where's Beast Master? <laughs> that's like, this is, but that's the big thing right now. Is like The thing that makes Beast Master pretty freaking absurd are these Hawks. So good. You can already see the sentries just laced everywhere. Like, look look at the situation of TNC. Like, okay, we're not just checking for wards here. We're just making sure these areas are not covered by birds. I mean, I know you're a fan of birds, but for me, eh. We take over. We're everywhere. I mean, you know, OD is like some weird sort of astral form bird when you think. He's got little wings. Isn't he more like a sentient space rock? Something like, well, he's got little wings. That's all that. Look, look at the little wing. It looks so stupid as well with his legs. <laughs> look, look at his legs go. It's <laughs> <laughs> like paddling through air. <laughs> but enough of that. <laughs> you know that the paddling pony galop would be cute if he didn't have such a really deep voice? <laughs> it would. He's suggesting like a kind of weird squeaky voice for Odina. Odi! <laughs> Wait, that's Ogre. Yeah, that's, uh, I think no, that's too deep. everything is just Ogre Major for you, isn't it? I don't know, it just kind of, it all blends into one eventually. <laughs> Once again, one of these smoke trades, they're, they're not here, TNC. They're not. They're up in your base, and now they TP back to Ruby. I, mean, I guess you could just give him like a kind of uh, swaler voice. I'm still thinking about OD. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking about the game, I'm not just thinking about... No, you could make him sound like this. Yeah, like, what I'm thinking about is that for Detonator, they're, they are butting up against the high grade now. They are. And they have all of this engagement, but they gotta pull it off perfectly. They gotta actually, like, drag someone from the high ground, probably. And... Raging Potato, looking for an opportunity. Stampede's used. They move forward to Tim's. The Stomp isn't gonna be there. Follow up. Finally, they'll get it. They'll find the kill. Not the big ones they were looking for. Tim's again. But I was yeah, going to say, the beautiful thing to look at, like, what are you seeing a pattern with the map that is quite regular with detonators right now? The yeah. bot lane is the only one missing a tier 2 for TNC. But it's also the lane that TNC have been unable to take any towers in. But they religiously adhere to the jungle trade. Which is fine, but I think that's exactly the thing that's also costing them all the rush hands all the time. Because they're just always on both sides of the map. But now Gabby's going to work, and he is catching up to that PA. You do not want that to happen, because this man, if he can't cross the gap, he will kill all of you. And he has proper defensive measures, that's the worst thing about it. Like, you can say, oh, but they can jump in two times, three times. He can get defended two times, three times, and he's got that BKB. There is more layers coming, though. The, the Basher has just been picked up by the Phantom Assassin. 
and building into the mm -hmm. Abyssal next. So they are increasing the amount of control they have on the side of Detonis. That is of concern. It is of concern because they have two jumps right now, Centaur, Batrider, three with PA, and they have three defenses. And then of course got Beastmaster Prime Roars as well. He gets yeah, pretty scared. Yeah, but he's, he's, he's got to walk. And you have Snowball, you have Astro Imprisonment, and you have the two abilities of you have the Winter Brace. Wyvern. Yeah. Yes. So there, there's a lot of layers to this. And in Kale, I was there with uh, with another Gabby uh, Terrorblade where they threw the kitchen sink at him. They used double Chronospheres, double Laguna Blades, double Light Strike Arrays. Everyone had refresher shards. And it was basically a big game of keep the Terrorblade alive or kill him. And I could see that coming here as well. It was... It's very interesting because it's not about who has the best disables, but more like who has one more. Just one more because you're layering the defenses and the attacks. Sam H. He's trying to get some disables out, gets disabled himself. We'll go down. The snowball through looking for more. Teams won't be able to find it. Ice Shark coming off cooldown. Ben Hur needs to be careful. He steals the Ice Shards. Buyback comes out in the Batrider. That will stop them. The split's running out soon. Suddenly TNT looking to back up. The pings come out about the Roche Pit. The problem is... Stampede ha was used. You've still got the Primal Roar. You've still got the Lasso. I'm not sure you can commit All the All of Detonator's bit. jumps are still up, and you have committed most of your resources, so I wouldn't do it. I'd settle for defending your mid towers right now. Are you pushing out the side lane? Nope. The line's being drawn. They're going again. They need another pickoff. Metamorphosis is running out very soon. If they can't find the pickoff now, I don't think you can commit to this. They're not in time. There's nobody They're looking in the wrong place. Like, look at the move actually coming out from Detonators. A familiar backstab to the last game. Skirting over towards the side, but at least TNC are ahead of it this time. TNC might catch someone on the retreat now, once Detonate has realized there's nothing here, but at the same time, Detonate is no, committed to the push. Away. And his PA kills towers like that. She does indeed. And with Metamorphs running out, you don't really pressure towers as hard as you would. Well, funny thing, we might actually see Detonator fight a Roche again. They are learning. They, they 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 found the pit. I'm impressed with these folks. They have come very far. Very impressive. And I'm oh, Lasso! They got the Wyvern! BKB, Rage with Potato, the big target is found now. An additional one. Rio down to half HP. The Stomp is there. Astral to protect, but now he doesn't have himself. Armand has to be careful. Primal Roar pushes them away. Stunned up, moving across the crits. Rage and Potato takes control. Real go down as well. Now Gabby trying to fight us with the BKB. Phantom Strike away. Blur just running away from himself because PA hits way too hard. Tim trying to back away. Armel still trying to get across the fight. Gabby's BKB runs out. Lift's going to be there. The bash as well. He's in trouble. Signs Eclipse. They get the PA, but they lose Gabby. Buyback out from the Phantom Assassin. And Armel being chased onto as well. Sam H going to push him back. Astral being used. Just so he has enough time to move away. Ben Hurt, he can't get close enough to the Astral. Or can he? has got Blink. There it is. Gets in range. He says, come on, folks. Catch up. Get your slab of meat right here. Big Maybe fat kill on an OD. Yeah, but they're not stacking. Like, look at, the, look at it right now. It's just waving everywhere. Lift is out again, and OD's been found. Oh, oh no, the Astral better. He's going to find the wipe, and it's going to be a team wipe with TNC. There are no survivors left here. And this is his second death for Ninja Boogie as well. And that's a slow death as well. And the winner's cut. He's just like, screw it. By the time I'm up again, it's going to be off cooldown. And look at your base as well. Like, Raging Potato didn't even keep pursuing. He saw the opportunity. This is brutal. This feels like the same as in the last time they played against Zedna. Do you remember that fight on the bot racks? I do. And TNC was in completely the wrong position here. They... Once the enemy has pushed that mid wave out, you can't come back. You need to cut it in time. Otherwise, you're just going to get pressed back into unfamiliar territory, no vision, and the enemy can do whatever they want with you up on that island. Well, it's more like usually this this kind of concept of, of the catch them on the free is good because they're going to try and rescue that ground. Yeah. But you're up against a bat rider more than anything else. You know what he's going to do. It was a blind blink. There's no vision for the dire up on this high ground. He just went in. He grabbed the first one he saw, and that was very luckily for him, the Winter Wyvern. Who Great instinct play. Yeah, like Wyvern, uh, you don't ex he must have been surprised as well. You jump up, there's like, you know someone is waiting right there. Yeah. You don't expect it to be the Wyvern, though. You expect it to be like the Tusk or the Brewmaster. Yep. That's one of the reasons to be in formation, even when you're not expecting a fight. So listen for TNC. 
And as a result of that mistake, now you can see Detonator starting to pull ahead even more. The Abyssal is complete for the Phantom Assassin as well. Getting ever closer to level 25 talent where these crits, they feel a little bit less RNG with an increase of 5%. I feel like I almost exclusively see that. I don't think I've... I don't know if I've ever seen someone take Blur com at a competitive level. Mm, miracle on occasion? But that's a long time ago, and it used to be in games where he was just completely balling out of control and he'd be stacking butterflies. Yes, those type of games. So, <laughs> just your regular yeah. PHK. In most, in most normal games, you'd see the grid. Better to kill them quicker and then hope you live longer. Pretty much. This is the burst of physical heroes. Of course, the other thing that we didn't even talk about is just how good. It's so obvious to me by now. Like the triple strike dagger. The op like it's just the opportunities that it opens up. Because you throw a dagger, they crit. Suddenly, your enemies are just panicking. They have to back up and give you so much space. Yes. You're cancelling blinks. You're taking down heroes that would have really wanted their entire HP pool before they went in. And you're not it's really committing yourself. Siege, siege. But this is this is definitely the dangerous point for Detonator because they might have an Aegis on this PA, but they have no good ways to take a base siege fight. That's the thing, you're going in choke points against a Tusk, against a Wyvern, against an Owl Devourer with Sani's Eclipse at the ready. Yes, you're most likely not going to have Division Supremacy. Oh, are they jumping, Gabby? They are thinking about it. The pings are coming out. They're hesitant right now. Armel is sending The birds see everything. Yeah. Now the lasso, they've caught the target reel. No! The Astro used on himself. Armel makes a mistake there. And they lose the Brewmaster. He does have buyback. Yes, so Brewmaster, well, he still did his job, you could say. He tanked Lasso. That is very true. It's on cooldown for 65 seconds. TNC maybe take a, a sigh of relief. Slight mistake made there that they could have saved him. Armel had to be quick. Sadly, he was a little bit too quick. Predator? Well, it looks like Predator's going to be fine. Then they just back up. They say, just keep farming. Just keep getting more items. We're building a gold lead. Yes. Terrorblade isn't doing anything right now. But that backup was not good enough. Uh, sorry, that pick off. So they recognize that they're having an issue, but at the same time, that feels bad. You're like, well, I guess we're uh, we wasted our time here. They do seem very hesitant, even with the Aegis and the Cheese sitting on that Phantom Assassin. They're just reluctant. They're worried about every, like the what ifs. It's like, okay, Phantom Assassin is protected, but what if the Rubik just gets picked off? What so if? A lot of buybacks on the Radiant, and they're. This is a smart move by TNC. They know that most likely the enemy team is going to come through here next. Take that last outer tower with the Aegis instead. So they're claiming the high ground. And Raging Potato is going to oh break no, the smoke. He's moving in first. Yes, goes BKB, but they come straight past him. They look at the back foot. Looking for a target here. Sam H getting low. We'll be able to move away though. The split's going to be compared. Yule's coming out on the Rubik. Should be able to blink away safely. We'll do so. Meanwhile, on the back foot, Gabby. BKB'd up. Trying to fight against his Raging Potato. Goes into crits. The winner's curse being used, but OD is already dead. They need to actually get rid of this Phantom Assassin very quickly here. We'll turn around. The Bash comes out. The Terror Blade needs to be careful. Mana just to dodge out and move away. Snowball across. Good control on Sam H. He should be going down. Gonna chase on through. Ben here does steal the clap. Trying for the opportunity. Now the Stampede being used. Trying to move away with the Phantom Strike. Turn around for the kill of Tims. Raging Potato still looking to fight up against this. Buyback comes out from Tims. Still gonna TP in, but Rio's already dead. Now the Roar is punched through. Good control, but the damage is not felt. He'll turn around. Tims getting low. Raging Potato. He'll leave the cheese. Trying to stand up against Gabby. Hits so damn hard, though. They need the lockdown for this Terror Blade, but it's just not there. The last two drags in the Brewmaster. He's looking to fight. Doesn't have to split anymore, but he does have a lot of help to work with. And Raging Potato has none left. Sam H. He just watches helplessly as his team. Teammates fall one by one. Oh, that was... You could even argue that TNC could have started that fight off way better, but they just... They completely... Walked past the Phantom Assassin. They did. He, he went up high ground and we're like, okay, he should be dead. But nope, they just <laughs> jumped straight past him. And the biggest problem for Detonator there, and it's a problem that they haven't had in the past two fights, is... Oh, are they going for more? No, they're not. It's just they're, they're, hesitant. Our, they're happy what they got. They, they say we it. can push. Actually, yes. This PA does not have buyback. Now, what I was gonna say is, in the past two fights, they haven't had to fight up against just Gabby in full metamorphosis mode, lobbing nukes at them. And now they had, and you can see how devastating that was. As long as they don't get him, there is this huge mass of illusions just. Killing everyone. Is and that is a desperate move. You can see the way they just sent it in on with the tag team activated. Yeah, but that's a good trade because he has a buyback, so you buy time for his life. Yeah, Ruby will be up. 
Oh, the fuck. gem though, that was not good. If you're going to suicide in, you can't drop the gem. Gives it over, he panicked, he rushed. It's gonna be a set of racks, but look at it, Lift comes out onto Gabby, gonna drag him in. They do have the lasso, but they're hesitant to commit it. Finally, go go for it back in, but no, this is snowball in. Hit it right, back right, gonna four star through. The BKB is activated for Gabby though. Primary roar out, they're throwing everything but the kitchen sink at Terrorblade, and it's doing nothing. Astral to protect from any additional damage. There's actually a bad BKB there. Stomp? Oh! And then Astral again? <laughs> He's super deep, but he's fine. Split comes out now. All right, he's in trouble. He just fought back. Sadie's Eclipse gets him. Bainer on the side. You just to protect himself because they've surrounded him. He has no way of Astral being used again. He has Look himself. At Look at this, Reed. This is so good. They have to. Like, too much time is being bought. PA is up in 10. If they commit right now, she comes up. You get unlucky, you're dead. Yes, yes, yes. But any other SEA team apart from Fnatic would have just fought on here. <laughs> Anyone. You were you were going ham. It's going ham in their heads as well. People are yelling in Tagalog, and then someone's yelling back, 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 and it's so good. It's one of those few things that sets TNC apart from a lot of these other teams. Because, you know, you might win the game there, and a lot of people would have said, well, if you might win the game there, then you should do it. No. This is the kind of back call that makes the difference. And especially the moment when everything's going crazy, and someone has the presence of mind to say no. And the way like, they all turn at the same second, it's beautiful. It takes months of practice. Well, it's the crucial word, die back, isn't it? It's like, yeah, centaurs, it's 4v5. Oh, Ranger Potato, BKB comes out in time. We'll just go for the TP away, but the Winner's Curse is there. And no one is coming to help him. And Phantom Assassin still has no buyback. We'll be going down, can't fire up against it. Oh, wait, no, he did get it off cooldown, just in time. He got tipped. He got tipped, but he does have the buyback now. That is crucial here. It is. He buys enough time out of the base, by the way, that Centaur will be up. They need to win this fight. Otherwise, TNC will take everything. They are still up against a full metamorphosis, though. Tough duration, but that's long enough to melt the whole base. At least the Sanities is not up. And the Winter's Curse also got used. TNC really got to play this one carefully. Yeah, they're just sticking the Terra Blade forward. Everyone else behind them. <laughs> Disastrous, though. The length of time on the Rubik Astral They're is ridiculous. They're buying back. They brought back the PA, Centaur. They've yeah. moved out of the base with the smoke. Centaur is on the side, yeah. Look at the backstab opportunity. All right, got revealed by the Courier. Oh. That is unfortunate. Has to back away, or does he? Fly solo is still moving forward. They need to get some of that has been here. Blink coming off cooldown in three seconds. Gabby going to go for the TP opportunity. No! This Stampede too late. Looking for anything oh, they can no. find, but TNC. Everyone TPs out successfully. You were telling me that I was going to chew my nails. I was like, huh, he wishes. Well, <laughs> one by one, you're like, are they out? Are they out? Just, you know, there's a fire, right? You're the teacher. The children are hopping on the bus and you're going, wait, where is, where, 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 where are Timmy? they? Where's Timmy? Where's Boogie? Gabby? Oh, man, that was, I mean, again, so good, though. That's, that's probably also why I'm emphasizing it because these are the kinds of things that normally when I'm sitting behind them I'm like you want me not to talk during scrims but I want to yell out here <laughs> just kind of like write on each page of the book why do stupid <laughs> no, no, I know exactly I know exactly why there's a lot of people think I don't know why but it, it, I know exactly why it's just that there there needs to be a trigger moment built in first before you can stop doing it and if none of them can build in the trigger moment, the coach can build in the trigger moment. And then afterwards, it's going to activate on its own, and people on the team will start doing the back at the right moment. But if the habit's not there, you gotta you got to create an opening first. So this is definitely starting to feel like an elimination game. As you can see, it, it's, that's, that's more yeah. than anything else. Like, we've seen multiple scenarios where both sides could commit for a potential win, but they discipline, they back away, because it's just too much risk. This is TNC in serious mode. Can we see the gold graph, perhaps? You want to see how things are swinging up? How about that for a dip back towards your boys at TNC? Oof. That does not feel good when you're detonator. And they had the chance to go high ground, remember? They even had the pickoff. They were reluctant, though, because they didn't get anything out of their opponents. Yes. And they assumed buybacks. They were right in assuming that. But now it's just everyone looking towards Roche next. You can already see just both sides trying to get controls different waves to make sure that is a possibility. The thing is that right now, if you're playing, you really have to 
be sure that everyone on the team has let go that idea, but we could have gone high ground earlier. If you think like that, you already lost. Yep, because then you just get the turmoil within the team, just turning on each other. Yes. And they have the methods needed in order to take this late game, but Gabby has more than caught up. He's leading Netrisk right now. He is indeed. And when you look at the other heroes in TNC, I mean, you know, you've got these Ghost Scepters both on both teams supports. Know Roche is up, by the way. There's a boar in the pit, and Tim's just checked it with his shards as well. Yeah, he's been spamming. He's anticipating the going. You have to watch it all the time because it's a Phantom Assassin. Like, it could disappear in seconds. Seconds may be exaggeration, but... Well, uh, 15 or so. <laughs> if that. These as I was talking big about ones. before, it takes a lot of time to cross the map on foot. You're looking at, from the shrine alone, at least 15 to 20 seconds. OD did just show bot. They've still got the shrine though. That is the important part here because despite taking that tower ages ago, Dene has never got a chance to get rid of the shrine. Mm. And it's really changing the w they, they can't go super aggressive because of this. It's bad enough fighting the high ground. It's another thing when you know anyone who's not there can instantly just TP in. Yes, or buyback. And once again, there's a lot of buybacks up on TNC. Whereas Detonator spent their most important buyback. And Detonators, they also don't have that option to get back in the fight. Of course, you know, those shrines did go down. Well, the important one anyway. Most of Detonator's heroes are the kind that blow their important spell immediately, by the way. So that also makes the buybacks a lot less potent. Gabby is pushing hard forward here. Rage of Toe. He needs to be careful. He's separated from his team here. Now Lasso coming on the wide and trying to drag him across. Can he do enough? Tim's trying to back this up. Snowball. Good control on the centaur. He hasn't even done the stomp yet. Forced off trying to get away. Swyvan almost dead. Will go down. Now Centaur will die in response. Buyback it. comes out from both the supports from TNC. Lift is out. BKB from Armel looking for a target. Astral's going to be there, but they haven't done anything about this Phantom Assassin so far. Final turn around. Rage of Potato looking to move away with the Phantom Strike. Trying to get rid of Rior. Yes, he'll find a BKB in time. Science Eclipse does nothing. Buyback used. Or by the Brewmaster. TNC are investing everything in this fight. Yes, as long as Gabby still has the Metamorphosis up, it is worth it. And he does indeed, and he hasn't got long left. If they want to go Roach, it is right now, and it has to be. Without the Centaur, without Stampede, this is the best opportunity TNC will get. No last one for 10 more seconds either, no roar. Can you afford to give this over? Detonators, they're thinking about going in. They picked up an Invis rune on the Phantom Assassin. I don't think it will be quick enough, though. Right. No Primal Roar to work with. They slow down. TNC are separating in the pit. Two, one. Basu finds Armel here. They're going to jump in the pistol. They get him. They give up the Roche though. Sam H moving in. Hesitates. Just backs away. Fly solo. No primary roll for 25 seconds. Lift is going to be on Terra Blade. He does have the Aegis, the BKB, and a refresh shard though. Gabby down half HP. I don't think he's terribly afraid. Rage of Tears from Cinderella. Abyssal still on cooldown though. Do not want him to go in though like he's but these ice sure. shots he has to use the sunder now and they stole the reflection hmm. that's his backstab sam h needs to get out of here he's actually trying to burn them up bkb comes out from gabby he's just trying to zone them out ninja boogie getting low because of that ghost step that they're going to turn around the fable come through witness curse being used by back being used getting involved with the fight armel is now here daggers trying to force them away but now you're in trouble ben here he should be well down he's got the yules to try and blink away in time he won't be able to make it though he goes for the steal he actually gets equilibrium no Oh no. At least Rubik has buyback though, and suddenly Detonate, they retreat. They know that was their best opportunity to try and take an advantage, but TNC, they hold their own. I think that was taking it a little bit too far. Like, if Sam H is careful there, Gabby, like, Gabby was posturing, right? He felt pretty damn invincible, even when his team had most of their spells on cooldown. I think you can wait until he goes in, and then you do the backstab. I really think so, but that requires trusting that you know what they're going to do. And the difference between that scenario and what happened earlier that we saw with the Phantom Assassin with the Aegis, where they just dodge her and hit the back line, yes. is you, he has that refresher shard. He can instantly just get Metamorphosis back up and then just fight you. Whereas the Phantom Assassin is always going to be this hero you can cut out. The Terror Blade has reached a point between the reflection, between having double Metamorphosis. You can't do that anymore. Yes, his uptime is huge. And that's an uptime on the power spike. I mean, PA is always online. She's just not as strong as Terrorblade at his peak. Now they did spend the, the buyback on Armel, though. 
And that, that was probably how TNC hesitated. Yeah, because uh, like, well, think think about what happened last fight. How easily he melted through our in the end, and he's got BKB, but that's it. Like Astral defensively, sure. Then what? You need people to get you out of a jam, and you have. We talked about these heroes that can do it. Yes, but when you don't have buyback, is it worth the risk? Because at this stage in the game, that loses you the game. Yes, they invested so many buybacks in getting that Aegis, and they did get it. But yeah, all your eggs are in the Gabby basket now. I mean, it's gone though. Like it got expended. Yes. That's the so other big deal. Just, just a refresher shard now. Like the refresher shard, like this is golden for the Terra Blade regardless. Oh, it is. Like almost but 3k it, HP. But it's not the same, is it? Yeah, not the same as a second life with a refresher shard. All right, but you can't be greedy. Sometimes you have to choose. I'm not greedy. Phantom Assassin wishes is more greedy. Keeping up with the Terra Blade at least. But what do you build next? I mean, he doesn't even have boots anymore. You're fast enough. You're an agi hero. Come on, folks. Are they fighting in the river here? They're looking for it. Is Gabby, Gabby revealing. Now the lasso coming in. Down to half HP. The Widow's Curse being used. Astral to protect as well. PA was the target. But no damage being done. And now Gabby stunned up with the Abyssal. Can they do the damage? Just stop. Trying to protect him. The Cold Embrace. Is it going to be enough? No. They haven't got the magic damage. Can they get one crit? Raging Potato trying to move away. Phantom Strike up. Gabby. He has no sun to target. Has to use on Armel. And that is a crucial issue because TNC suddenly have to retreat fast. Ben Hur, he's got the Astro, he's got Lift coming up cooldown. Walrus punch on the Sam H, but it's just a distraction on the side. Armel now can't protect the Terra Blade. They're going to turn around, look to him, because he's so low on HP, they'll realize that they'll kill him off. Trying to move in, Astro comes out. Terra Blade just controlled up right now. Tim's juking out of RR, but he doesn't do enough damage. Oh, hitting so hard, the crit through with the dagger. No, they get rid of Tim's real, he's going to get low while the Sunder comes out. Raging Potato trying to move away quick enough, but he can't. Gets overwhelmed with the damage from Gabby, and now the Storm's going to come out, they're going to turn around. The buyback out from PA, the Sunder used, gets Gabby to full HP. Ben Hur, what the hell? Have they got the damage though? Lasso, they're gonna it's burn him up, and he has got the Sunder. Can he get it out though? He's gonna turn around. No, he hasn't used it. It didn't matter. He goes down Raging Potato with the big fat crits. He comes in and he decides to fight in favor of the side of Danaeus. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Danaeus, they suddenly feel in control, but they are hesitant because they are sitting there going, We know they have used most of their buybacks. But what of the Terra Blade? He has nothing though if he buys back right now. No metamorphosis. They should realize this. They just picked up a DD as well. There's the buyback. Now they go, okay. We know what's on the table. He's he trying to buy it. He's got a refresher orb. Oh, this is the only play. He has to do this. Don't show, don't show, don't show. <laughs> Secret refresher. Keep it hidden. Tim's was pinging. He knows this Beastmaster Hawk is coming. You can see how both teams feel about this because despite three heroes being dead and them knowing the others do not have buybacks, Detonators still will not approach those choke points. They do not trust this one bit. And you gotta imagine that this is a really big moment for Detonator. They are on the verge of eliminating TNC and that pressure is ramping up right now. Just like the last time when they could have gone high ground here to... Are they too impressed with TNC? I don't know. They're giving respect. They they know what this Terra Blade done. They saw what this Terra Blade done. The only way they were able to beat him Sam, was by kind of out. But now Sam 8 sees him on the low ground. BKB in time. They'll drag him far, far away from his base nonetheless. And Gabby needs to be careful. They're going to blink it. The Sunder switch. Oh, better! He got low on HP. The Cold Embrace to save. The Witness Curse being used, but on the Phantom Assassin. They can't do enough right here. Split's going to come out. Gabby will go for the Sunder. Turn around. The Phantom oh. Assassin. No! PA down. Fly solo. He needs to get out. The BKB is activated. Armel on the chase. Sam H will make his escape. Can they find more? Armel with a double kill already. The buyback comes out of the Beastmaster, but they don't have anywhere getting the PA back in. The most crucial kill found. And then the cute attempt to play. Foiled by the efforts of Ninja Boogie. That was such a clutch save from Mike there. I can't believe he actually pulled that off. Red the I am, I am I am going full bias mode here now. I, I'm trying to stay impartial, but this game is getting intense. But look, Sam H is still alive. You've got to be impartial. What can Sam do? He's going to need to do something. They know this PA has gone for 80 seconds without buyback. Well, Sam's cutting the wave. He has to. It's big risk, but big reward. Four stuff away. Tim's moving across. Rose Punch comes out. He's pretty tanky, though. Ding, ding all you want. You ain't getting that creep wave. They can uh, try and backdoor this. Yeah, he is trying to backdoor this. I don't think... Wait, no. It's not. The, the creep's reached it. 
There's one. <laughs> These astrals. <laughs> <laughs> There's this, this one creep and they're pinging it. They're gonna like, kill this creep. Oh, he was coming out. BKB by Gabby. Logan on a ruby. They roll through. They stun him in time. He can't blink away. Now, Lasso's going to be there. They're trying to get to the base, but can they? The stampede isn't good enough. They won't game in the found. Gabby's going to be fine. It looks like TNT. Can they do this? The primary roll comes out, but they don't have the damage. Rubik almost dead right now. Steals attack team. Gets back. We'll be able to heal up. They're going to keep going. They need to delay them so much, but Gabby with a refresher should be fine. Moving in right now. Astro, they say just ignore Detonet. Let's go for the throw. TNC. It took so long, 52 and a half minutes. Are you okay indeed? Because their hearts oh. have got to be going 200 a minute. I got to hold on to the desk here. Hey, you're right. Compose yourself because TNC, they keep the dreams of Katowice alive as they take the series against Detonator 2 1, but way too close for comfort. Yeah, that, uh, comf no, no comfort, no, sir. That was, they really had to pull out all of the stops there. And you could see Raging Potato pinging the one creep at the end. And it took way too long, but RR actually came in and double-edged it. <laughs> by then, it's but, just too but, late. But then it was too late. The back door had been disabled for too long. And Gabby had gone to work on those buildings, and it was just over. But you could see that TNC needed to make that play in order to close it out. Anything less was not going to cut it. And that was the thing. You reach this point where it's like, all right, this might be a risk. It's like, we've been saying that all game. Yeah. We've saying that for the last 20 bloody minutes. And as a result, we've been going back and forth like a goddamn tennis rally for the last 20 minutes. There is a point at which you just say enough is enough. And that was the golden opportunity. Phantom Assassin, dead for 80. Even with how much time detonators could buy, it was never enough. No, it was never going to be enough. But you got to imagine that detonators got the chance twice to end the game. They got um, the moment on bot where they picked off the brewmaster, and they also got the moment when they took the last tower top, and there was literally only Gabby and the Winter Wyvern. And they hesitated too long on that one, went in at the moment where all of TNC respawned, and missed out on their golden opportunity. And I think that is inexperience right there. You have to make that call, and you have to trust that if you make that call and it goes wrong, your teammates are not going to crucify you. But the hesitation there shows that because now now they're going to have a fight anyway was it the right call was it not and now they actually lost without taking your chance and i would personally always rather lose having taken the chance because they knew that taking it late was going to be a tough spot no matter what and this is the thing we, we saw this especially even from like tier one teams a few months back as they were making the adjustment on what is playing too safe it's like you know, the whole logic of, okay, take tier twos, don't go high ground to a roach. And, like, there was always this balance happening where you'd see people basically juke, juke themselves out of a game win because they didn't want to go because, you know, they were aware of the risks, you know. Yes. From the early days of Dota where people were just stacking up for a five-man black hole to the days where I was like, don't, I don't think I should do that. No, that's a bad idea. We're still seeing the difference between teams like TNC that have a lot more experience together being able to identify and make those risky calls and realize the rewards, and then maybe a team like Detonator being given that opportunity, but going, I, I don't like the risk here. Is there a safer way if we just calm down? Yeah, but you're doomed by your draft. If you wanted to siege that high ground more safely, <laughs> you should have bought some Meteor Hammers. <laughs> but with this, yeah, because with this lineup, you with are going to have range. to go in. With multiple heroes. Yeah, on a Rubik or something like that. Like a what? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be okay with that. But as a result, that does mean Detonate is out. They're done. That was the shot. They missed it. But TNC, they keep the dream alive. And they're going to have to work hard for it because, of course, well, they are going to go up against the people that made Detonators look um, quite sad. Yeah. Quite upset. Because yesterday, low tack managed to 2-0 beside Detonators. You know, it's not that straightforward, guys. Remember, these teams, their different play styles match up differently. We've seen TNC trump other teams and then struggle against someone like Detonators that are losing to said teams because the styles are different. But do you know what the good news is? We at least get to see it through thoroughly because we will be going to the best of five shortly. It is a best of five with one game advantage for the side of low tack as they were the upper bracket winners. So TNC starting one game behind. Can they keep the dream alive or will low tack remain the favorites coming in and through game, uh, day two? I want to find out. You want to find out. But we've got to do some ads. We've got to do a bunch of ESL stuff, you know? It's on Twitch. Shut up complaining. <laughs>